So this is the single system fundamentals, kind of like I just said for anyone who just came in, uh, and also for the sake of the video. Uh, this is basically, you just have a Linux terminal, you've maybe messed around with it a little bit, but you really want to know why you are taking all the trouble to learn all of this, uh, and what kind of cool things you can do with a Linux system uh, and a terminal in general. Uh, so Windows actually does also have a terminal, as does Mac. Mac is Unix-like, so all of the commands that we see uh, and a lot of the same ideas with users and files will also apply to Macs. Um, Windows is a little bit different. They use this thing called PowerShell, uh, which has some similarities and some things that are not similar. But long story short, Mac and Linux are pretty similar. Generally, Windows is not. So just in case you don't have access to Linux. Um, so we are probably not going to get through all of this, but this is everything that is covered in the slide deck, and I will just go as far as I can. So if I'm going too fast, or if you have a question, please feel free to raise your hand, uh, and I will respond. I really don't want this to be just a lecture. Uh, I'm kind of hoping that you guys will uh, tell me what you want to get out of this, and that I can deliver that to you. So. Um, if you have any questions either pertaining to this slide deck or just in general, uh, I hopefully will be able to answer any questions. Uh, and if not, then we have the internet. So, uh, so the first topic we're going to cover is the terminal and a shell. Uh, and kind of to e go one level more abstract than that, uh, I'll talk really briefly about what an operating system is. So an operating system uh, is basically like the heart and the brain of your computer and everything else runs on top of the operating system. So it's what starts processes, um, controls packages, users, uh, your file system, all of that, everything. And the, at the end of the day, is talking to the operating system. Um, so whatever flavor of Linux you have or Windows or OS X, that's what an operating system is. Pretty basic. I think pretty much everyone knows this slide. So a terminal uh, is actually the window that you interface with, uh, or that you use to interface with a shell. And a shell is how you talk to your computer, essentially. So if we think of like, a lot of people probably have used web browsers mostly when they use a computer, uh, or maybe a program like Microsoft Word or games. Um, those are all programs, and a shell is also a program. Uh, it's a program called Bash, um, and it allows you to interface with your file system, which interacts with your operating system. Does that hierarchy kind of make sense to people? Like you have files, some of them may be programs, and then Bash is what is used to kind of interact with that. Um, and the terminal is the actual window that you look at that from. So uh, the terminal used to mean the keyboard and the monitor, so kind of this like crash cart image up here. Uh, now it's something called the terminal emulator. Um, there's a couple different shells. Most of you probably use Bash. Uh, I would recommend starting there, but there are others if you want to try them out. Um, so there's several commands that you can use in Shell to do things. So for instance, ls, the one that I uh, kind of ask people if they knew, that will list all of the files in your current directory. Um, so do people have kind of a good idea of what a file system is? Like can someone kind of describe to me how they conceptualize a file system? Maybe? A tree. Yeah. Like, um, your root directory, your home, your boot directory if you have one in it, et cetera, where your documentation is going to be user, user local bin, et cetera. It's just like a file system, a tree hierarchy of where your files are at and where they're positioned at based on your flavor. Exactly. Um, so if you guys ever, uh, in any other computers you've used, have probably seen, like in Windows, it has that nice GUI where it has all your different files listed out. Uh, so that basically is your file system and is a visualization. So what he's talking about is on every Linux system, uh, we have a root directory, and it's denoted with the slash, 
the tilde means home. So my computer's name, the host name is Anastasia after I named my computers after princesses, even though she's a Zarina, I know. Um, <laughs> uh, so tilde is home, and that is my home directory. So that is slash home slash Lucy, which is my username, and then that's where I am. Root is the root of the computer, so, um, or the root of the entire file system. So like he was talking about the file system is a tree, and that's the root of the tree. Um, and then if we do ls in here, there's a whole lot of directories. Uh, really the only one that you need to care about at the moment is home. That's where all your users are going to live, and that's where you probably are going to live. Um, but there's a couple others. So bin stands for binaries. Uh, it's probably not actually where all of your downloads, like when you install something, traditionally that's where they would go. Uh, now they probably go into slash Etsy or uh, USR, kind of depends. Um, some others, MNT is generally where uh, like if you plug in a USB, it will mount to the MNT. Uh, that might actually be one that I made. I'm not sure. I have a question about that. Uh, o over the years, things have changed uh, as far as the, the mount directory and the media directory. Yeah. Uh, some of the, it used to be, I think everything went into mount, and now half of it goes into media. Uh, do you know what drove that? Oh, uh, I have no idea actually. Um, I think I actually made the media directory so I don't know if that will be actually in every uh, system. I know some of them do, some of them don't. Yeah, I'm not really sure what would drive that. It might be based on the port that you're using. So the like slash dev slash sdb1 or sdb2, depending on like if you have multiple USB ports, that could be it, but I'm not really sure. Um, anyway, so this is a file system, and I just ran ls, so that lists all of the files slash directories. Um, so like, let's look at something that actually has some files. So everything that's in blue is a directory. <coughs> it might not be blue, it might be a different color, no promises, but like, generally you kind of know if it's a directory, right? So like downloads, probably a directory. But if you do ls minus l, then it's Oh, hey, yeah. Uh, you're already getting ahead. This is like way later in the talk, actually. <laughs> um, that's fine. We'll, when we get to it, we'll know. So this D tells us that it's a directory. Um, especially like if you're on a server where your terminal doesn't necessarily have colors, that can be helpful. Um, so yeah, the D means it's a directory. The dash means it's a file. There's a couple of other ones, like a symlink is an L, I think, and. I don't know, those are the only few that I know well, about. We'll see, we'll see kind of what level of execution they're at, too, so, so you know whether the file's executable or, or just a read-only. Oh, okay. It belongs to, so it's... Oh, okay, cool. And you can see those are all loosey-loosey, so you know who the files belong to, too, so... All of them are me. Well, I think one of them is the user and one is the group that they belong to. At least that's yeah, my understanding. It's the it same user and the group, yeah. Anyway, uh, so you can see all of these are just files, like a .pdf, uh, .dex, my to-do list, stuff like that. Um, what else is interesting? Uh, so a couple other commands. Uh, people saw me use cd, so like cd to the root directory. Uh, cd stands for change directory, so it's like saying, oh, I see I have this directory called school. Let's go in there, and then ls, see what's in there. These are all the classes I'm taking this term. CD with no arguments just takes you to your home directory. Um, so that's kind of a cool, like, maybe don't do CD tilde. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I just, I, I'm old. And I no worries. And I know DOS, you know, a little bit, like, this much in DOS in grade nine. And is some of this, like, the change directory, I'm like, I remember that from that DOS yeah. shell program. Yeah. And I was just wondering, like, how much of that transfers over <coughs> to? Um, I... Some of the really basic commands will transfer, like uh, instead of ls, it's dir. Um, yeah, so I mean, all the really basic stuff you still can do, the exact syntax is probably going to be different. Yeah, those are pretty universal, yeah. Um, 
generally I just run Linux commands and then if I get an error of like I don't know what this is, I Google it. So a significant enough amount that I'm able to use the DOS shell, but um, your mileage may vary. <laughs> so, yeah. so I don't want to I don't want to make promises that I can't keep. So I'm going to say not a lot, but um, that's my general workflow on that. Um, that's how you find it. You type in a, a DOS thing, and it's like, oh, I should. Oh, actually, that worked, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you know a lot of DOS, you might just try running some stuff. Allegedly, DIR actually does and then something. You can alias it, so there are all these DOS bands that you really, really like, and you can't remember them. The Linux one, you can just alias DIR for the right LS. And yeah. Customize it. <laughs> All right, uh, so we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. Uh, I'll just uh, kind of keep on with this uh, basic Linux command stuff. Uh, so earlier we did ls-l, so that's a flag. Um, you can pass flags to, here, uh, I see some people. There, people can see that. Um, so passing flags to commands essentially allows them to do something very specific. Um, so like ls usually just lists all of the items that are in a particular directory, whereas ls-l, l stands for long, or you can think of it as standing for long. Um, so that's just giving us more information. So that's an example of a flag. ls-a will show even hidden files. So a hidden file is one of these dot, they're also called dot files. Like the um, HTXS ones. Huh? Like the HTXS ones. Yeah, exactly. And usually there's configuration stuff. Um, so like dot Mozilla's configuration for Firefox. Um, we'll take a look later at dot bash RC, which is configurations for your bash shell, stuff like that. Um, so that's an example of a flag. Does that kind of make sense to people intuitively? Yeah. And then obviously you can pass them arguments, so like CD to a particular directory. Um, I also want to talk about tab completion a little bit. I know you guys can't really see what I'm typing, but um, yeah, like instead of typing out school, I can just type S probably C and then tab and it will tab complete a directory. And if I just type, uh, uh, let me do a different one that has multiple. Oh yeah. Yeah, so you can up arrow through all the previous commands. Yeah. That's so Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> and then let's say I do capital P, and it's like, I don't know which of these you want me to do. Just punch tab a couple of times, uh, and it will list all of your options. And then you can be like, oh, I actually meant public, which actually it probably doesn't have anything in it. Um, yeah, I think those are some of the basics. Let's go back to the slides. Um, so what cat does is it will uh, print a file to the screen. So like I have this one called um, recipes, which is just a bunch of URLs of recipes I want to make. That's actually not that pretty. Um, <laughs> let me do my to-do list. Um, so this is basically just like throwing uh, everything that's in the file onto the screen. Um, so if you have a short file and you just want to know what's in it, you can use that. Uh, this is actually especially useful if you want to cat something into something else. So um, I don't know. I'll try to think of a good example of that. But it's something I've used before. Maybe you have like two, maybe two different recipes and you want. Oh, it's a uh, cat. What's it stand for? Uh, good question. Concatenate. Probably. Concatenate. Well, so so actually, this is kind of a good segue into what a man page is. So, has anyone ever heard of a man page? Yes. Yeah. Can someone tell me what it is? Very long. Pop quiz. Days. <laughs> it's more or less essentially a manual for a package or program. Yeah. Or even a command. command. Exactly. Okay. Like, if, like if you man uh, LS, it'll tell you that you can do all the flags, like the L flag, the H flag, the A flag, and all the other things. So. 
Yeah, so basically what she just said. Steal the words right out of my mouth. Um, so this is the man page for LS, which we already know what it does. It lists information about the files in the current directory. Um, and then it also has all of these different flags. So like we saw the ls-a does not ignore entry starting with dot. Um, what else? Which LS. One's nice for human interface. Oh, I haven't actually done that before. Very cool. Uh, so if you ever hear about a command and are like, oh, I don't know what that does, or I want to try to do this, but I don't know what flag to pass it. Yeah. It's just much easier to see it. When you're when you looking at something, and it's a massive file. It's not that fast. What is that? Okay. <laughs> That's <right. laughs> This is too big. <laughs> um, and then uh, echo. So, like I said, my host name was Anastasia. Uh, so that can echo some of the variables of your Bash environment. I wouldn't worry too much about that actually, because we're probably not going to talk about variables of Bash environments. But it's a thing. It might come in handy at some point. Um, does anybody know what this string of characters is, for it chance? Must not be you. Yes. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> well, do you know why? Because they're they're used in scripting. What do you mean? Right, writing a, a bash type script, they mean various things. But there's there's some repeats. Like I see I see a uh, colon up there a bunch of times. Is it like don't do colon like something like a word and with a colon on either side of it? No. So this is something called a fork bomb. Has anyone heard of a fork bomb? <laughs> yeah? OK, now everyone's like, oh, yeah, I know what a fork bomb is. Um, I think this is the one for Windows. I might be wrong. Uh, but basically, this is a, a very short script that says, make two clones of me. So every time it runs, it doubles in size. Uh, and basically, like, I don't want to say DDoS, because that's totally not the right word, but like, it overruns your system, and then you have to restart your computer. Usually nothing actually gets broken. It's kind of like a prank. Uh, <laughs> although, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a mean prank, but whatever. Um, yeah, so uh, I guess I didn't really cover invoking an installed program, but do people know how to do that already? Maybe. Um, well, so I guess this kind of gets into another thing I should talk about, which is that everything that I just ran is just a program. So ls is a program or maybe a function. Um, cat is another program slash function. And basically, when I when I run it, uh, that's not a good one. Uh, my computer goes into some directory in my root directory, um, into the bash shell program, and says, "What does ls do?" And then it says, "Well, ls lists all the directories," and it does that. So. Um, basically, in order to execute a program, uh, you just I don't run it. I don't really know how else to phrase that. Um, but running an executable, you just type it in. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so has anyone written Python before is maybe an example? Yeah, sweet. So when you run like Python, run my Python script, that's calling uh, the Python that's on your system and saying, hey, do this thing. So yeah, pretty, pretty easy. Uh, and then there's one called tree. Uh, I should not have done that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> It'll stop eventually. But uh, tree just lists all of the <laughs> files in your directory in this like nice, pretty format. Uh, does, does it start at whatever the active is, so don't ever do it in root? Yes. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the mistake I just made, I'm pretty sure. And I'm, OK, yeah. And it'll tell you how many directories and files you have. But so it basically starts at wherever you are in the tree that he was talking about earlier and does everything down from that. So like if it did root, it would just do every file and directory in your I system. Wish Microsoft still had that. Do they not? No, you, you really can't do a, a print print directory structure anymore like you could in DOS. 
Mm hmm. Oh. It's kind of unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I found it helpful for like papers and stuff before. Um, invoking a script, we kind of just did that. Uh, does anyone know what Siege Mod does? Yeah. Um, which kind of gets us into permissions. I think I'm going to talk about that a little later, so I'll skip it right now. But if I don't get back to it and you really, really want to know what it is, uh, raise your hand and ask me towards the end. You find out about it when you find you can't operate a thing. And you yeah. <laughs> <you're not> <laughs> Very accurate. Uh, so we saw LS, we saw flags. That's a thing. Uh, file paths, uh, we kind of touched on this, and it is probably pretty intuitive. Um, but if you imagine your file system as being a tree structure, you can imagine there's a path to wherever you are, or to any file, really. Um, so it's like traversing that tree structure. So um, for example, uh, what is it? P Here, let me clear this so you guys can see. So PWD's print working directory, and that will show you your file path to where you are. So I'm in slash home. Again, slash is the root, so slash home slash Lucy. Um, uh, so now we're in slash home slash Lucy school ITNA, um, stuff like that. So that's your file path. Every file has a path. So like if you're ever, I use a lot of making my websites uh, when I have to like link to an image, uh, then I use the file path to do that. Does that kind of make sense to people? Yeah, pretty, pretty intuitive. Uh, roots a thing. Uh, Lucy? Yeah. He came back to his question in um, Windows if you use PowerShell uh, show dash tree. Oh yeah, it, it, it does work in PowerShell. I'm just looking up. I'm going to try it. Oh, very cool. Thanks for doing that. Um, one thing that I do want to point out on here is I kind of mentioned the idea of users. So like I am Lucy on my system, and that's slash home slash user slash blah. Uh, so like on here, it's test. Uh, you can have many users, obviously. Um, well kind of cover this in more detail hopefully later, but like, just be aware of that. Um, special characters. So we also kind of mentioned this when we were looking at the fork bomb. Uh, there are some characters that are special to the bash program. So uh, an exclamation point uh, generally means the last thing. So if I do bang bang, it will run the last command. Uh, and since I just cd to my home directory, it doesn't actually do anything. This is actually super helpful uh, if you ever uh, run a command that's really long and you don't want to type it again. Uh, it's kind of a replacement for up arrow. But another thing that's really cool is that you can append stuff to it. So like, if I run something and it's like, you don't have permission to do that. And I'm like, yes, I do. I have sudo. At, or I'm in the sudo file. Then you can do sudo bang bang. Uh, that's usually what I use it for. Um, Star means anything. It's a wild card. So if I wanted to say, like, uh, ignore the man behind the curtain, uh, 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 can everyone see at the very bottom of the screen? No? OK. Let me clear. Um, so I want to copy everything that's in this Euler directory into this demo directory. So the slash star just says everything that's in there. Um, it actually won't copy hidden files, fair warning, but like you probably don't need to worry too much about that. So uh, we can see before this demo directory is empty, this Euler directory has some stuff in it. So we're going to cp. We're actually going to do dash r so that it gets the directory. And then everything is in there. So does the star kind of make sense to people? Uh, if you want more information on stuff like that, I would Google regular expressions or regex. Uh, that's kind of like more broadly, there are lots and lots of special characters. Um, and you can use them to do some really, oh, it says that right here. You can do some, use them to do some really powerful things um, and save yourself some typing. 
So more on that, those are really the basic ones or the ones at least that I use every day. Um, and if you need to escape something, so you're like, well, I want to type an exclamation point, but I don't want it to mean do the last thing, then you do slash. So, um, so like that. And it would say, I tried to run bang bang as a program instead of as the special thing that it means, and it's not a thing. Uh, does that kind of make sense to people, regexes? Cool. Uh, really tiny XKCD. Um, so this goes back to something someone mentioned earlier about aliasing, uh, or saving yourself from typing things that you do over and over and over again. Uh, usually stuff like CD, it's like, it's two characters, we like CD, unless we're always CDing to <coughs> some, some file really deep into the file structure, uh, we usually won't alias stuff like that. Um, but, let's bin my .bashrc. So the .bashrc is your bash configuration file. It has lots of cool stuff. Uh, most of this, I think, just comes uh, stock. But there is some stuff that I've done that I can point out. So one of them, and if you uh, open up your own bashrc, you can kind of see what's going on in there. Um, so like this X term color prompt is saying like, yes, I want my shell to have colors. Um, okay, this is kind of what I was looking for. Um, can people see the purple? <coughs> kind of, kind of not, huh? Um, how about that? Oh, that's so much better. Cool. All right, so this whole thing is my prompt. And what a prompt is, uh, is, is that. So the Lucy at Anastasia colon tilde dollar sign, that whole thing is your prompt. And you have a lot of control over that, actually. So um, uh, this is a very long string. I won't go over what everything is. Uh, but like some of these slash zero zero three, like that's a color. The Debian ch root, that's uh, the host. No, I don't actually know what that is. The H is the host. The U is the user. The at sign we saw. This final dollar sign, since it's escaped, uh, is the dollar sign that you see in the actual terminal. Right there, that dollar sign. Stuff like that. So that is an example of something that you can uh, do with with your bash uh, RC. Anyway, back to aliasing. So alias basically says uh, instead of typing out ssh ymnl at shell own it oregon state edu every time I want to ssh into my shell account, I just want to type shell. Um, also sleep is pseudo pm dash to spend. Basically you're saying like, instead of typing this long thing, I want to just type that. Um, so if there's something you find yourself typing a lot and you want to save yourself some time, that's kind of a powerful thing. Um, is there a way of uh, worrying about screwing the whole thing up? Uh, can you, is there sort of a pseudo bash account that you could Play around with and leave the original there so you can actually get back to it. Uh, what do you what do you mean? Uh, if you damaged it enough, that it would oh, the bash RC. Yeah. I mean, what I would do is I would just make uh, like s copy your bash RC to like yeah, or like dot old bash RC. Yeah, so uh, I would just copy it. CP is copy. I would copy it to something like that old bash RC, and then you have the original uh, if you ever something happens. Uh, I don't. Do you know what GitHub is or version control? Maybe for everyone who's nodding, uh, you might use version control. Like I have all my dot files on GitHub, and then if I ever get a new computer, it's really easy to set up because I just 
pull them all down and my computer's how I want it. Um, but if you're not working with Git or anything, or Mercury, um, I would just copy it. Does that seem like a good thing you work around, kind of? Yeah, if you're using Git, you just save that as a for yourself. Yeah, I mean, I would just, I literally have like a, uh, like a dot files repository, I'm pretty sure. Uh, maybe, possibly. Maybe, it might be private. Oh, no, here it is. Uh, so I literally just have like a dot files directory or a repo. And then you can see like there's my bash RC, which probably isn't actually up to date, but um, I have a global git ignore, vimrc, stuff like that. Yeah. It's helpful for troubleshooting too because you may have an alias that goes to something that's no longer working right. Mm -hmm. So if you make a copy of your bash RC, you can go in and comment things out to try to figure out what the hell's causing the problem. Yeah. It's <laughs> a good idea, yes. Yeah, definitely. Um, Especially when you transfer everything over. Oh, well, my. Yeah. I have a lot of rogue engineers that like to do things like cool. that. Cool. So. <laughs> uh, well, documenting is always good. Document everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah the af after you recover from the car accident, uh, <laughs> what the heck was I doing? Yeah, the joke at our office goes that you're not writing docs for other people, you're writing docs for you six months from now. Yep. When you look at the thing, you're like, what, what was I thinking? Um, so the other thing that I have on this slide is reverse search. Uh, so that's control R. Again, I know you guys can't see what I'm typing, but control R. That's it, no caps or anything. And so it's reverse I search. Uh, and you can look up commands. So like, uh, I'll just show you guys the one that I always do. Uh, oh man, yeah, no, none of them are gonna work. Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll just try this. So this is searching through all of my previous commands and it's showing me the last one that involved git. And then if I keep control Ring, it'll go through them. What if you want to do a list? Can you create a list? Kind of. Searches without everything that's get, gets in? Uh, so you can do history. Um, you can probably do some fancy regexes and flags to get this to show you exactly what you want. Um, I don't know exactly what the best way to do that is actually. through your history and yeah, I mean, well, so one thing you could do is you could grep for something, or uh, like history pipe grep git or something, and it'll show you a list of your, and it'll highlight it. Does does what I just typed actually kind of make sense to people? Uh, probably not if you don't know what grep is, but um, so history is previous commands. It doesn't go on for an eternity, obviously. like. That wasn't all my commands ever. Uh, I'm actually not sure how far back it goes. Uh, I think you can set like how far back, back in your bash. In your bash you you bash. do that in your bash? Anyway, and then grep uh, is like search. It's the search utility for Unix. Um, so grep is going to look through that list of history commands for whatever I tell it to. So git or yes, ls is kind of boring, but it'll show all the times I did ls <laughs> or fundamentals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, and obviously it does fuzzy search. So like if ls is in the middle of something, it'll still show it. Um, and is that vertical line, is that how you represent two commands? Two oh, commands good <coughs> question. Oh my goodness. I like totally didn't explain that. Yeah, so uh, this is so called a pipe, uh, and it sticks two commands together. So it's kind of like saying, uh, run this command, and then run grep using the output from this command. So it's kind of like, does anybody know what function composition is in mathematics? Or is that like, girl, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Okay, cool. Um, 
So basically it's saying like take the output from this and give it to this. Output to input. Kind of makes sense? Um, I see some people taking pictures, so I'll like uh, leave that up there maybe for a bit. Um, so that's, we got like way off topic. Uh, <laughs> that's reverse search. Uh, I already talked about tag completion. Does anyone have any questions so far? Yeah, uh, you, you, uh, uh, do. you, you passed it with a pipe. Yeah. But you can also do that, can't you, with a greater sign? You know, when, when do you greater. use one versus the other? Uh, as far as the input or the output of one as the input of the other one? Usually I think of the arrow, usually I do that into a file. So I'm saying like, like I'll do cat and then something into a file. Um, I don't actually know, or I don't know that I have a good answer for that. Um, remind me at the end and I will Google it for you and try to have a better answer than I don't know. But, um, There's a thousand different ways yeah. yeah, I mean, as far as I know, they serve the same purpose, but I'm sure that there is a difference. You yeah? Take a crack at that? Yeah, go for it. <coughs> so when you use the greater than sign, you're saying run this command, but don't show the output on the console. I want you to put it into this file, and that's the end of it. The vertical bar is run this command, type it somewhere temporarily, I don't really care where you put it, and then run this other command against that results and then when you get done throw the results away. Oh, okay. So the the alligator will save the output of the first it's one? Got, it's gotta go somewhere. Yeah. And and then it's basically um, so so it kinda goes into a temporary location. Oh. Here's what I want to try to put into a file called grep. Uh, so so that's basically I'll put it to a file. Leave grep, grep okay. Leave grep off to another crash. We're trying to give the piece grep off. Bar is going to do. Well, I think yeah. then it's just gonna. It will just, it will make a file named Git and put it all in there. Oh, right. Oh, okay. And then it'll have my history but in it. The history bar says pipe this somewhere temporarily, then run that temporary file against grep, and then when you get done with it, give me the output of grep to the console. In fact, you can do history bar grep ls and then pipe the results of that to a file. Oh, and then shoot that into yeah. it. I usually yeah, actually think of search, it as like shooting it into a file, yeah. like because yeah. it's kind of funnel shaped. Yeah, so it's like I don't know. And then cool. We're all learning things. Uh, I'm gonna well, here. Yeah, I would not want to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Don't, don't do that. Uh, so let me remove git. So like what uh, he kind of just said, I have a dot git, which is my git configuration somewhere. Well, maybe I don't actually, because it's not a git repo. Yeah, I don't know that I actually have a global dot git, but I do have like a dot git ignore. Anyway. Um, okay, so when you do something, like I did the tree thing, and it was like, oh man, this is not what I wanted. So let's actually just do that again. Uh, oh my gosh, control C. <laughs> um, so control C stops the current process that's running. If it doesn't immediately stop, that just means that like whatever you ran is like really heavy and it's taken a long time. So like just kind of pound it a couple times and it will <laughs> it will eventually it stop. Yeah. Yeah. It's like at the crosswalks when you can walk a lot sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like it's just kinda it'll it'll take a minute sometimes. But uh control C will stop the process. Control D will close the whole terminal. So that uh control D is uh exit or escape. So it closes the terminal, which again is just the window. Um, yeah, and it will that will also kill all the processes that were in that shell. So uh, if you have something that's like really 
bad and you really need it to stop, control C tries to quit nicely. It's like, I will try to wrap this process up and make sure there's no like zombies and all this good stuff. Control D is like, no, just die. So, uh. I'm right there when you close, like when you're in Microsoft and you go to close something and they say, oh, there's still operations running in the background. And it says, do you want us to force close? Yeah, or, you're like, yes, Or do you want to just I wait, do. you know? <laughs> um, technically it's the end of file. Why is like colon Q, I mean. I like nano better. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. So this is for Vim. How many of you guys have heard of Vim or Vi? Oh, awesome. That's actually a lot of people. How many of you guys use it? Oh, very cool. Yes, yeah, so you're all like, yeah, I know what the colon Q does. I still like nano better. Um, and then the reboots on your screen is just like depending on what program you're running or in the middle of. So like if you uh, are in Git and you want to get out of like a merge or something, it'll probably have a different syntax for exiting. That's all the last line means. Okay, pop quiz. Uh, what user am I logged in as? Yeah, cool. Uh, what command did I just run? And current directory? This is actually kind of a tricky one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you can tell because there's a, a tilde. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there. All right, uh, we already saw man pages. There's also a dash dash help. Sometimes that's helpful, sometimes it's not. I want to mention getting out of the man page. Oh, yeah. People know that. I don't think I escaped. Oh, cool. Uh, so, it, can people read this at the very bottom? Mm -hmm. Press H for help. What does H actually do? I've never done that. It's like man for the man. Man for the man page. <laughs> and then when you're done, just press Q. So, or Q when done. You can also search for uh, commands too. Yeah, it was and slash. Uh, can people see this? So if you didn't know, was you wanted to do networking. Oh, you mean out. for? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So if I quit out. Well, so. Yeah. Slash is like WS then, is it? Huh? Is slash like WS then? Slash is search. I don't know what WS is. But you use WS to search. So. Uh, but slash. So like, if I was looking for the word list somewhere in here, and then. Uh, you just hit N to go to the next one, N, 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 all the way through the file. Um, sometimes that's helpful. Uh, what was that you were talking about? The if you wanted to search for commands that reference networking, you would A R A P O S network or networking. Oh, A P A P. A P A P. A P A P A P A P A P at pro, at pro, at Hey, I didn't know that was a that's, thing. That's, that's, sometimes yeah, so it'll that'll help you. give you a, a number of different commands based on that search criteria that you can actually look to try. That to like do things. Them. Sometimes it helps transfer from uh, DOS commands to do apropos dir, for example. Oh. Why is that spelled again? That sounds useful. A p r o p o s, apropos. And then, yeah, I had no idea that, that existed. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah. Very cool. Uh, yeah. I was going to start talking about some of the ones that came up, and then it was like, no, it's not a rabbit hole we want to go down. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's all for that. You can also Google things. Um, I don't know that there's much more to that. Uh, so. This slide deck was actually written by a friend of mine, the girl who gave the GitHub talk. Uh, and so this is a little bit of kind of etiquette for asking people. I actually a little bit disagree with it. I think if you have a question, you should just ask and like, yeah, you should like try to be knowledgeable and know what you're talking about or like Google for it first. But I'm also the kind of person who like really benefits from talking to people. So this is a slide 
I'll kind of let people read it, but I'm not going to dwell on it too much. Um, so. Most people I know who use Linux seem to be very much enthusiastic about it and really like to share knowledge with yeah. other people. So yeah. I just ask because people, and, and it could be like what happened just now, like the apropos command. It was, you know, yeah. it's a conversation. You know? Right. Yeah. And they say anything about learning, you show what you do, then you teach. Yeah. So if, if, until you actually teach, you're never going to really remember it. Yeah. So this is kind of a guideline. If you'd like to follow it, you can. Uh, I don't, generally. Uh, I think we probably all know all of this. Uh, I'll ask this one, though. Uh, so if I have a script test.py, how do I run it? We kind of kind of said it, kind of went over it. What what program would I run to run a Python script? Python. Python, yeah. So what so what would the command be? Python space name of the program. There you go. Uh, how do I list all the files? We did that. But then you can do a bash script so you don't have to type. Can, can I ask one last question on that? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm running programs yeah. uh, from the fan line. In some cases I'll try to run something and it doesn't run. In other cases, I have to do a dot slash name of the program. Oh, yeah. So that's if that depends on if the binary is in the place that you're running it or if it's in your system's list of binaries. So you have this thing called a path, which is all the directories that your system looks in to try to find binaries. Um, so so this is just a list. Uh, so it's like home, Lucy, bin, user, local, Heroku, bin. There's a whole bunch of them, colon separated. Uh, these are all the places it looks for a binary. So when I type in Python, it's going to look through all these directories to see if there's an executable called Python or that Python points to. I'm not entirely if, sure if how that If I have two binaries with the same name, it's the first one on the back. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, so this is in order of where it looks. It looks in that order. Um, and if it doesn't find any of that, if it doesn't find Python in any of those, it'll be like, bro, I don't know what you're talking about. But if you have an executable, man, I don't even remember the last time I had to compile a program. Uh, probably in here. Uh, yeah. So these green ones are called executables. Uh, again, they might not be green. Will it tell me it's an executable? Yeah. So an executable is anything that has this X. X is for executable. Uh, and in that case, I would have to do dot slash a dot out. And usually the program takes arguments. So because it's if you just uh, a dot out and say, I don't know what you're talking about, right? Right. So the reason that it does that, um, I actually don't know why it doesn't just look in the directory you're currently in. I'm not 100% sure of that. Um, I'm guessing it's a file pathing thing where it's like you have to give it a file path to, so like if I cd out of here and then I do, uh, where was it, Git, GitHub. Would that not be in the, in the uh, variable environment at the initial start of the file? What do you, oh yeah it actually could be. That's a good point. So if I open that file up. Uh, well, it's a binary though. I would probably have to do something weird with GCC when I compiled it in order to do that. You probably could. I don't actually know how. But, um, I don't know. I actually only have five minutes left or I would go more in depth on that. But, uh, we still have, literally I made it through like a quarter of my presentation. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Uh, so we kind of talked very briefly about users. So like, I am Lucy. The example was test. Uh, to find out who you are, if you're on a system that's not yours and you're kind of not sure, like maybe it doesn't have a prompt, um, then you can run who am I? Who am I? And it'll tell you you're Lucy. Or maybe it'll say root or Jenkins or something else. Um, who is who is logged in? Uh, so this is these are all the terminals that I have open right now. I obviously have more than one on a couple other windows. 
Yeah, so those are all the windows I have. Uh, and all of them are owned by me, so that's who the Lucy is. Um, uh, ID is the ID of uh, users and groups. I wouldn't worry too much about that. You're probably not going to use it unless you're in like an operating system class, in which case you probably know a lot more than I do already. So, um, yeah, users have a username, a user ID, so that's how they're referred to by the file system. Uh, a group, groups, uh, I actually haven't run into them too much in my experience with Linux, um, but they can be useful. Uh, if you want to give a group of people certain permissions, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so like, if you're at a workplace and you have a dev team and you want them to have different permissions than your system administration team, which is probably it's probably the case, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then you might give the system administrators their own group, which has their own permissions, and they can do special things to special files. Um, a shell is owned by a user, so like, uh, with all those, all those shells are owned by me. Uh, you sometimes have a password in home directory, not always. Um, and I'm actually going to take these last five minutes for questions, because we're not going to get through all the user stuff, and some of you might have questions. Yeah. My question is actually, like, can we access the rest of your stuff, you know, by yeah. somewhere? Yeah, actually, let me uh, throw that URL up again. Uh, yeah. So it's yeah. dot org uh, slash devops bootcamp slash single system fundamentals dot html. And if you just go to like half of this URL, so like if you only remember slides dot dot org, then it'll show you a file system, and you can click on DevOps Bootcamp. So let me actually just show that, what I'm talking about. Um, so, ooh, what you doing, bud? OK, just loading. Hopefully this will load. <laughs> cool. Uh, so if you just go to slides.osuosl.org, or we say slides.o.o, you can see like the DevOps Bootcamp thing and just click on it. Oh, yeah. And you'll probably find your way. And this is actually where all of our Bootcamp stuff is. So if you're interested in more slide decks, uh, each of these is their own slide deck. Um, the, this presentation specifically is actually at the very bottom. I mean, it is its own thing. But you can see like here's kind of a different version of the talk we gave. Here's the one on Git. Uh, editors and version control. <coughs> Uh, stuff like that. So there's that. And uh, if you want to follow us on Twitter, uh, it's at OSU OSL. And I will post the video of this talk. If I like said something where you're like, I really want to remember that thing, it'll be there. Any other questions? No? Nap time? Cool. <laughs> All right. Thank you, you guys. Thank you.